All right, class, you've had a few minutes to do your warm-up vocabulary. So before we get started on that, I just want to talk to you about this quote here. Who would like to read the quote for us? All right, I'll read it myself then. You must never be fearful of what you are doing when it's right. And that's by Rosa Parks. Who can uh, tell us who Rosa Parks is? What's something that she's known for? Yeah, she didn't move uh, to the back seat on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama and uh, kind of sparked the bus boycott that was on segregated buses. Now, she was an important woman leader, and uh, we're going to look at another woman who in ancient times led for a lot of women's rights. So I want you to... Uh, we'll go through the words, our vocabulary words, orthodox and schism. So let's uh, open up our vocabulary slideshows and we can get this going. So, first vocabulary word, orthodox. So who has the definition for that? All right, the definition is supporting traditional customs or beliefs. Now, when I think of that traditional customs and belief, orthodox, I think of the word old school. And that's kind of just a newer way of putting it. Um, so if we want to use that in a sentence, does anybody have an example sentence that they might have for orthodox? All right, I have one for you. So I said, my grandpa is old school. He has an orthodox view on life. So in that example, it shows that orthodox and old school kind of mean the same thing. And that's that traditional customs and beliefs. And uh, when I thought about this earlier, I got this image for it and have a man in a suit and tie, and kind of that's a orthodox way of dressing. So let's look at the next word, and that is schism. All right, who remembers the definition for the word schism? Yeah, it was the division among members of a group. Good. And all of these are in the lecture from last night. So the division among members of a group. So if you have a group, if we had this class and some of you thought one way on one thing, and some of you thought the, another way on something, you would have a schism. So uh, my example sentence for this There's a schism in my friend group between people who like U of M and those who like MSU. All right, in here, who we got? U of M fans, MSU fans. Ah, so there's a schism in this class as well, similarly with my friend group. And uh, this is an image that I found earlier right here. And you can see this is a schism because you have two opposing sides and there's a gap between them. So that gap is where that schism comes in, when two sides don't agree on something or there's a division. All right, so 
Now, if you will open your document, Empress Theodora, the first feminist, this brings us on to our lesson for today. And so, last night in your homework, in the homework lecture, we talked about the Byzantine Empire and all the various things that the Byzantine Empire did, and how it was basically a continuation of the Roman Empire, but just in the east half of it, in Constantinople. So I want to show you uh, this, and we're going to start talking about this, and we're going to read this article together. So for much of history, societies have been predominantly male-dominated. Men typically held all the power in the military and in the government, and often passed laws placing restrictions on what women could and couldn't do. Because of this, it is important to recognize women who took positions of power and use that power to improve the lives of women and fight for women's rights. Even though Justinian I was the emperor of the Byzantine Empire, historians often look at Empress Theodora as more of a co-ruler rather than just being his wife. So in this lesson, we're going to explore Empress Theodora and the Byzantine Empire and discuss her accomplishments. So, we have some questions here, so I want you to make sure you look over those questions uh, before we go through the reading. And then also, down here at the bottom, we have some options of how you'd like to answer those questions. So you can just answer them straight up on there, right on the document. Or you could do the form of a video blog, so it'd be like your, your favorite YouTubers explaining this information. Make sure you ask me to like and subscribe the video. Um, or you could do the historical figure Facebook page. And just to uh, remind you, you have the historical figure Facebook page template that looks like this. So make sure that you're answering the questions in the form of posts that Empress Theodora might make, if you choose to do that option. So let's go ahead and get started uh, reading the article. 